Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are at, because now is the time for Sipuel de Cascos to start up his next podcast, Beyond Kicking and Punching. Again, thank you very much from wherever you guys are tuning in, and make sure you have your pens and papers ready to go, because these two great men have a lot of gold nuggets to actually start learning from okay so what i would recommend is make sure you really tune in and what they have to say because these great men have pioneered depending on where or what part of the world they're at they have pioneered one hub kendo kajikemo so again let me introduce Sipu al de cascos hey hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Kicking and Punching. I'm so excited because we're going to be flying high and you'll have an experience with us as we venture into the yonder beyond. We have Sipu Akamid from Kuwait and um, I'd like you guys to all welcome him, give him a real big clap and a lot of noise over here, guys. And uh, we're just going to have some fun. Okay, let's go for it. Hey, come on there. Get the clap there. All right. Um, Hey, we get, we, without further ado, we just want to go ahead and get started with this podcast here. And uh, and we're just going to take it right from the top and, yeah, and go for it. So, where is Ahmed? Yes, I'm here, Sifu. I can there hear you. Is, okay, there he goes, the man himself. Uh, not sitting in his pilot seat right now, just sitting in his office. Ahmed, mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of questions to ask, you know, yes, a lot Sifu. of people. Um, especially uh, that are not too worldwide. They want to know exactly <laughs> where Kuwait is. So where is Kuwait? Oh, okay. Kuwait is in the Middle East, uh, the Gulf where is Saudi Arabia. That's the biggest. So everybody knows where Saudi Arabia actually in the Middle East. So Kuwait is on uh, north of it. So small country, but you know, it has big stuff that Everywhere, everyone in the world can know about it because, you know, you've seen it, you've, you've been here. I know most of you guys love it, love the heat, but you know that people run, run away from here in Kuwait, yeah. but everybody loves it here. Kuwait is amazing, young country, but it's big in everyone's heart. What's the population of Kuwait? Uh, it's like now, maybe it's about like, Three million and a half, something like that. Uh huh. Maybe, maybe something maybe. like that. I see. Yeah. Uh, right, and you guys are known because of the oil. Yeah, a lot of oil there. Um, sort of uh, like a tunnel. yeah. Right. But but it's not it's not underneath my house, so uh -huh. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. But it's there. <laughs> you know, Ahmed, uh, let's start. Yeah. Um, yes, Sifu. <clears throat> In the very beginning, how, how, how what, what drew your interest into the martial arts? What what martial arts did you get started first? Okay, uh, first thing I got interested in martial arts because I was, when I was like a little kid, like around five, six years old, when I actually started going like, you know, school when I was young, I got bullied a lot, you know. So uh, when I was in the military school, uh, sorry, uh, elementary school, uh, you know, I've seen a judo class in my school there. So I asked my mother to join and my father. So they let me in uh, to join the judo class there. Uh, when I joined, I was like around eight years old, I think. And from there, it just clicked. You know, I just got into it and I loved it. I've been there like for four years doing judo and uh, that was that was my you know my passion uh, at that time so I, I i didn't really you know had that what everybody loves soccer or like what you call it football here in kuwait i got into martial arts since i was eight years old because it got into my mind when i was bullied but i got stronger in judo so i got to you know defend myself Mm, I see. Yes. And uh, what about your children? Are you going to put them in? Of course. My son is already almost in. I, I brought him here a lot. So he's he's so into martial art most, uh, more than anything. 
So I'm just waiting for him to get, you know, that. So yeah, my on the right side, that's my son, Hamad. On the left, that's my, my new little daughter, uh, Lulu. Uh, so Hamad, inshallah, join, uh, is gonna, uh, he's gonna join uh, our school here in Kadri Kimbo, Ohana, Kuwait. Uh, and then, yeah, he's gonna be one of the students here. And hopefully my students, the teachers here, can help him and get better and be a better man. Mm, yeah, I got so many questions to ask you. What about um, your uh, Kaju Kembo and how did you get started into it? Oh, okay. Kaju Kembo, the, that, that was, you know, this is my first teacher, Sifu Ahmed Zakaria Hussein. Uh, I got introduced to him. One of my close friends in school, uh, he was a really nice guy, really, you know, peaceful man, you know, in school, I was like, when I got to know martial art and then, you know, I got stronger before. And then in school, I used to fight a lot. So this guy was so peaceful, you know, even even if people tried to fight him, I was there, you know, to support him. And, you know, I don't let anyone to fight this guy. He, he, he just hate fighting. He don't want to fight anyone. So the same guy told me, you know, I'm at, uh, there's a school, they, they teach, you know, martial art. Do you like to see it and join? I said, what is it? He said, come, come and watch. So I went there. I was shocked, actually, because I, I have never seen people wear black, actually. I'm used to the white gi in judo or karate, so I've, I've seen them before. But that was my first time seeing people wearing black. And I remember it was it was a test. There was a test there. This guy who introduced me to, to that school, it was his test to a brown belt. So I was like, wow, that peaceful, you know, boy in school, he's testing for his brown belt and he was so aggressive, so strong, but too humble to fight in school. So mm -hmm. that really got into my mind. And then the teacher came to me Sifu Ahmed, and he said, oh, you, you came with Abdul. His name is Abdul Latif from Tawa. So I said, yeah, he's, he's, my he's my brother in school. So he punched me in my stomach. He <laughs> said, then, welcome, welcome, you, you got to join. I said, yes, I am, I will join. The way he, he really, you know, uh, welcomed me, you know, he showed the love, even with the punch or like his big smile, he always smiled. That was really something to me. He just got into my heart and my head. I said, you know what, I'm joining. That was around 2001, almost 2002. So hmm. I joined that school from that day and I, I was there as his student for eight years hmm. Hmm. until he passed away in 2010, uh, January 29th. Hmm. And what happened afterwards? Yeah. What was your history afterwards? Afterwards, you know, one of his students was a black belt. It was my cousin, Abdul Latif Rajib. So me and him uh, got the idea, you know, we said, you know what, let's open a school. Because when Sifu Ahmed Zakaria passed away, there was, there was a little problem in the school. Uh, a lot of black belts, most of the people, the old ones that they came back, the, the new ones, the people that were there training with Sifu Ahmed, people wants to lead and we, because we don't have a, a senior to lead. So a lot of problems happened, but you know, we had no, no issues to do anything you know, uh, about it. So I told my cousin, you know what, let's just open a school, you know, and then we, we search for someone to help us like a grandmaster or any teacher. So we were searching who's Sifu Ahmed Zakaria's teacher and who's his teacher. So we know that William Beaver, and you know him, Sifu. Uh, William Beaver was the first to bring uh, Kaju Kimbo to Kuwait at 1993. He was uh, fifth degree at that time under uh, senior grandmaster uh, Bob Mashmeyer. So Bob, Ma Bob Mashmeyer, he was the first uh, grandmaster to come here to Kuwait at uh, 1998, if I'm not mistaken. He, he tested our late Sifu Ahmed Zakaria to his first degree with William Beaver when he was there. So what happened that we contacted Grandmaster Bob Mashmeyer at that time. We told him the story that Sifu Ahmed passed away and stuff. So he really supported us and he said, you know what? Okay, and then I'm coming. 
So he came here to Kuwait. He knows about the problem that happened in our old school, but he supported us, you know, me and my cousin. And then uh, he tested my cousin to his second degree black belt. And then we opened our school uh, for that time. I stayed with my cousin until I reached my, my brown belt. And then I came to uh, Hawaii uh, before I opened my own school here. Uh, I came to Hawaii to, uh, I went there so I can test for my black belt there. And you were there, you and Sifu Aldela Cruz were the head of the board. Uh, when I got tested in Hawaii 2012, I uh, received my black belt after 10 years of training in Kaju Kimball. Uh, so at that, that time, I got promoted to a second degree black belt because uh, there was a rule that, you know, you can open a branch that you should be a second degree black belt, not a first degree. And because I had a student under me, when they came, uh, they were like uh, almost gonna gonna get their black belts because they used to, to, to train with my cousin and with Sifu Ahmed Zakaria. So when I opened the school, they came here and then I've tested them when, when you guys came to Kuwait 2013 uh, and I've tested them to their black belts and three of them, they were my first black belts in Kuwait. Uh, Sibak uh, at that time was Sibak Abdurrahman Abdurrahman and Sibak Abdullah Taqi and Sibak Yusuf Jama. Great. And um, yes. And you continued your training there. I like that picture. Oh, that's really oh nice. yeah. I, con I continued the training. Uh, and then by the time I had, I have now, like the black belts that graduated here in, in Ohana, uh, I guess it's like 15 or 16 black belts. Uh, now, yeah, now I have uh, the most senior ones, uh, uh, have three uh, three degrees guys, which is Sifu uh, Hamid Al-Ajil, Sifu Nawal Gharib, and Sifu Khalid uh, Tamimi. Oh. This picture here uh, with some of my black belts also when we were in Italy, uh, when we went to the WACO uh, World Championship, me and you and the guys. Uh, we had a really tough training with you uh, for the black belts. It was amazing. That was Sibak Hamid, Burhama on the right, C uh, Sibak Yusuf Jim'a, and then Sifu uh, Hamid Al-Ajil, me, and then Sifu Nawaf Gharib, and then Sifu Hamid Smith. There's one guy here on the left also, which is uh, Sibak uh, Hamid Al-Azmi. Mm. You also uh, took the arts and you taught in the military. You, I think you, yes. you, you taught with them. What, it was a special group of people that you taught in the military because I see it. Uh, I see pictures of you uh, uh, training. Um, yeah. Yeah. What What department were that? Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, I I started teaching the special forces here in Kuwait, uh, cooperating with the the Ministry of Interior here in Kuwait with one of my friends. He's a judo champion. Uh, Ghanam Degan, he was holding some of the, the groups that he teach martial arts. So he told me and my guys, we went there to, to teach and help them. And then after that, uh, when I stopped flying, actually, I, I, I went to uh, 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 the uh, actually, for, yeah, that was that was the F-18. You know, this is this was my last flight, by the way, at this picture. Uh, 2019 that was my last flight uh, from that day and then after that I stopped flying so I, I really loved to uh, spread spread the martial art in Kadri Kimbo so, so now I'm in charge of martial art in the military so I'm teaching the uh, the army and uh, some of the special forces and everyone so the picture before with the four or five guys I guess these guys were from Oman Oman Army, these guys, they joined one of our uh, training here in Kuwait. Uh, it was amazing. And then there's a big group, I guess, uh, there were like around 50, 50 something we've been teaching. And mm. uh, from next, from tomorrow, I guess, or next week, we, we have also 350 soldiers uh, to teach martial arts, actually. Mm. So yeah. um, you're, you're a lieutenant colonel. In the, in the airport. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And um, I like the picture of you flying upside down. Um, yeah. It's really, 
really neat picture. It kind of reminds me of um, Top Gun. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, here, here when I first start flying the F-18, we, we got so naughty actually sometimes. You know, we fly and then we take videos or pictures sometimes just to show off, you know, and, and you know, it, it, the F-18 or the jet fighter gives you this, you know, power, you know, makes you feel it. So it was fun. I was young and stupid, you know, done the stupid stuff. Mm. But thank God we're good now. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm not flying anymore, but still love it. And uh, it was one of the best times that I had in my life, actually. Mm -hmm. And I see that... Um... We've got some really good pictures of you and the Prince so when we when we were in Kuwait a couple of years ago. Tell us more about that, you know, bringing oh. Koa and, uh, uh, you know, one hop and do Kaju Campbell there. Okay, uh, so this one was the the biggest event of Kaju Campbell in the Middle East that we've been planning for eight years. I was thinking about it to bring grandmasters and you know uh, the, the, the the let's say legends of, of Kadri Kimball to Kuwait uh, so you and uh, senior grandmaster Abdullah Cruz and all these guys amazing people that I, I had from eight countries to come to Kuwait uh, we did a very amazing event here to test uh, two of my black belts two of my students Sibak Mehsin and uh, Sibak Abdullah at Salam Mahsin Uthman and Abdullah Abdul Salam, uh, my sons, these these two young warriors, they did amazing on that on that event. It was a pressure because you know we, we used to to do the tests and the test is already really you know hard and uh, it's not easy. Uh, the event was uh, supported by uh, Sheikh Fahad uh, Sabah. Uh, he was he's he's in charge of the Kuwait uh, Olympic here, uh, you know sports and everything. So he's, he's a good friend. He supported the idea and he wants to, uh, people to see uh, every part of, of sports everywhere. So we did this and it was amazing to have him there. And uh, uh, this event was history for all of us to, to have you there, guys. And still dreaming about it. And hopefully in the future, we can do something way better and bigger and bring more people to Kuwait and share the martial arts and even the seminar that we did. You guys, each one, each each instructor uh, shared his knowledge and with love to, to all the students and everybody loves it. And I don't think, you know, we can have this uh, anywhere. You know, when we do it, it's really good for, for everyone, actually. Mm. How was your experience talking to my son, Mark? Oh... Talking to Mark, actually, let's say you, you know, it's like talking to you when we're like alone, talking about a lot of stuff, you know, because you had a really, you know, a big experience in your life. So when I talk to Mark, I can see you in him and he has his own way on, on, on you know, living his life and how, uh, let's say, uh how can i say it he's so you know he's so straight and he does his his stuff you know uh how can i say it see for help me out uh <laughs> That's your I, I don't know I, I i i don't know how to say it because he he really touched me on that he's no matter what you know on that time he was on john wick three and he was so up there but the humbleness that he has is is crazy crazy he, he he really don't care to share knowledge experience it was amazing to, to have him here in kuwait i was i was hoping when i when i came to hawaii many times when i went there i was hoping that i can meet him and see him in hawaii but thank god that was amazing when i had him here in kuwait it was way different to have him as a big brother he shared his love knowledge and the support that he gave us it was different it was amazing i can see the professional life that he lives and how he's really com his commitment to to what he loves and what he do it's it's amazing actually mm. what do you feel now you know is your greatest accomplish uh, accomplishment in the martial arts in kuwait or wherever okay 
the greatest accomplishment uh, this is weird actually because every year I can I can see something different but now I can see that the the, the fingerprint we we leave in the students uh, to change their lives to a better person and and make them see how life going on you know how, how it's not about martial arts it's not just just teaching them how to defend themselves it's way different it's the way that to teach them how to defend themselves from their own you know danger inside their, themselves first uh, and then the, the the street or whatever outside but so the target was was different before but now the accomplishment to see the students grow and teach and most of the students change to a better person and better than me actually and this is this is what what my goal is, to make these people you know see what i saw and get way better than me and to to make this just carry on from you know from generation to generation nonstop and this is amazing i love it that's why you know kaju kembo uh, martial arts took me away from flying from the thing that i love because i've seen something value in it more than anything and i don't want this to stop <laughs> <laughs> so kaju kembo took you away from flying wow yes i mean you were flying high now are you flying higher i'm flying higher by the way <laughs> i'm flying higher great yeah. well you know like every every successful thing there's always going to be some kind of uh you know situation that forces you into that what um so i know that there got to be something that really drove you uh was there any kind of failure that you used to to move yourself forward failure yes oh okay okay that, we, that's we, good we all have it oh yeah of course believe me we had a lot so uh failure i had a lot actually in in life and in martial arts uh it taught me a lot like this failure made us made us today actually you know no matter no matter how successful we got because of these failures we got to this point uh if we if we didn't fail we'll never you know reach that point here uh it made us so for me all the failures that i got before in martial arts or outside or in my work or whatever actually there's no regrets because these things made us tonight these things made me that person now that people can see uh the experience that i had with the people the failure with these people in in the relationships and 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 how to react on it it really changed me and taught me how to uh deal with a lot of stuff so the failures taught me a lot more than success and i believe with each failure there is a big success in it if you can see it and with success you can you should see the failure in it sometimes in the success actually uh and the things that you lost and you know uh, but in failure you can see a lot of stuff that you gained from it to to get to make you better and uh it taught me a lot pain uh really teach us way better than many things So how did you adjust to the failure of having coronavirus there? Oh, coronavirus actually tested people's faith actually for real. Mm. Faith is 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 a word that everybody can say it, but who can really be you know ha- has it for real? Coronavirus made people afraid of a lot of stuff and I read I read something before they said fear stronger than love i was asking myself is that true or not fear is stronger than love uh sometimes you can see it fear really can make people you know leave leave their loved ones for 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 whatever just just to say me first you know but true love and real love can really can really actually be that but for me coronavirus was a really big test for everyone 
to test their faith. And we can see people fall and we can see people rise. Few rise from that, but many fall from this one, actually. So it was a, a bad, good thing, like most things, you know? Yes. Really, it's like a stepping stone to success. And True. I see that you came out of it. Um, did did your students, you know, I mean, because you, this, like all schools around the world, there were a lot of schools, especially when it's in the fitness industry, closed down. How were you able to maintain? Well, first thing, we, uh, we were trying to, to keep it going because I've seen a lot of people do it online training and stuff like that to maintain it. But the government here, they closed and open again, closed and open again. But all what I was working on to keep that faith in people because a lot of people didn't show up because they're afraid. They're afraid of the coronavirus. But there is a few showed up and they're still training. Have no fear about it because you know, as I, as I said, faith is, is really, should be strong. Uh, so we maintain that by, you know, keep going, uh, having strong faith that things, no matter what happened, we, we still can continue. Uh, sorry, death is, is gonna, gonna, you know, reach all of us one day. Mm -hmm. So why stop now? You know, no matter what happened, it's gonna happen anyway, anytime. We don't know. So, mm -hmm. Why stop? We want to stop. Why should we stop there and just sit down and wait for death to come? We should just carry on with this life until it came and until it comes to all of us. So we have no fear about it. We don't fear death. Death is 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 something. Is it's a fact and it's gonna touch everyone. Yeah, it's good for. Yeah. So 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 we just need to live this life and earn it. And deserve every every each on every each part of it. We shouldn't just stay there and get lazy until until we die. And I can see you, Sifu, Sifu. You know, you've been working no matter what. People don't. Most people, maybe, maybe some some of the, of the ones that they know you, uh, the close ones, they know. But most of them, they don't know that you, you know, you just got, you did surgery, you're so tired. Sometimes you can't train, but still you're training, you're working hard, you're doing your best, no matter what. That gives everyone, they, people should really, you know, be ashamed, especially young ones, you know, to work harder. They, they should work harder. You know, when I see that, I uh, say, you know, why am I stopping? Why, why, why just sit down and do nothing? No, we should, we should do something. And I really thank you for that, Sifu. Mm. Well, <clears throat> the freshest water has a good flow. Only water that stays still dies and stale. So you got to keep True. moving. Okay. True. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of movement going on in, in the organization now. And a lot of schools are beginning to come back. Mm -hmm. And good. I know this last year, year and a half has been really tough on you and on the, the school. Yeah? And I know that it was. one of your greatest pride and joy is your your son and your daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can go to school and teach, you know, and after having a hard day, come back and take a look at your, your children <laughs> and that's your pride and that's your joy right there. So yeah. it's, it's something that you can look forward to and you build your future for them and uh, that makes you you know just like a, a a good good aspirin so to speak um yeah what what are your plans now my plans in what exactly <clears throat> you know martial arts or in life or what's your goals good in martial art uh my plan as i said i want this to be like the seed that you know grows a big tree and then just keep keep going people i need people to just carry on doing what we do and uh, see what we saw with martial art it's not just punching and kicking it's way 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 deeper than that it changed people from inside out and this is what i want for everyone from younger students until the older uh, older ones 
And I hope most of the teachers, they can see that, I mean, my students, my black belts, and they can share that knowledge. As you taught me, Sifu, 100%, you gave 100%, so the 100% keeps going to each each generation. If you give 90%, and then the next guy give 90%, and then the next guy give 90%, that's like 60, 70%. And then one generation has 0%, has nothing from what you really taught them. And that's what we don't want. You know, we want this to carry on with true love, you know, and share the knowledge to everyone because that's going to change. The world is changing. We need to make people, you know, realize that it's changing to, to, to a different way. It's going somewhere nobody knows where. So everybody should be prepared, should be ready from inside, from their hearts, you know, they should be strong. So no matter what happened, like Corona or something else, they just don't give up, you know, they just keep going nonstop. And that's, that's for me here for life, especially when you said, you know, you, you work and you're doing this for your students for the future. I was doing this for real, but now I realize that having faith in, in, in God, having faith in Allah, is is gonna he's gonna take care of everything even my kids when i when i die tonight or whatever he's gonna take care of them no matter what no matter what i do to them for the future no matter what i work hard for them i'll do my best yes but it's it's just having faith that that's the true lesson that i learned in this these past two years you know on that hard time to have faith in god more than anything because that's what we saw people change no matter what their clothes no matter what they love you people change in hard times you know so having faith in god god will never change mm. well people are very resilient when situations happen you know we either do it voluntarily by ourselves or we get forced into doing uh, changes and this is the, pretty much the evolution of uh, a man just becoming more successful, but there's been a lot of violence in in the in the world and in martial arts. So you know you see a lot of violence that's going on now, <clears throat> and I see people taking this violence, you know, and thinking that the only way that they can become much better is to understand the correlation between love and hate, you know, violence and peace. And True. it's like yin and yang. And, yin and yang, yeah. Right. And personally, on my level, that when I see things, you know, the more I know about the violence of the human being, the more I learn to love the, 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 uh, the compassion about the human being because we have so it. So true. So and true. It's like, you know what Ahmed can do. And I'm sure you don't want to meet another Ahmed in an alley. You would rather meet another Ahmed in the Starbucks and having coffee and, and having love and compassion to each other. Yes, sir. I have an attitude is just that a lot of people, when I tell you that I teach self-defense, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I, I like to say that when I'm teaching self-defense, it is actually teaching self-love because True. when you self-defense, self-defense is everything. Like an example <clears throat> You get up in the morning and you, <coughs> excuse me, you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth. What are you doing? You're, you're defending against decay, and, right? <laughs> and bad breath, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And, you're right. And, 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 when, and when you get up in the morning and you, 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 you put your clothes on as self-defense because you are preventing against nakedness, right? So, so true. So true. So yeah. A lot of things that you do in life, if you take a look at it, no matter what you do, you know, you're already in the position of self-defense for self-love and self-preservation. You go yes, across sir. the street, you're going to cross the street, you look on both sides when you're self-defending because you don't want the car to hit you because you got your two kids with you. So yes, sir. When I ever look, when I look at things that way, that no matter what we do, you're self-defending, you know, you eat self-defense because you got to stay healthy you take your vitamins because you got to stay healthy it's all self-defense so when the violence happened and i look at it there's also the opposite side 
Mm. That's building love and compassion and showing people that, you know, I'm teaching you self-defense, but I'm also teaching you self-preservation and self-love and love for other people. The more that I can teach self-defense to others, the more I can teach love to other people. So that's the way I look at it. Okay. You may not look at it that way, but when you really... No, I do. I do, Sifu. Believe me, I do. I do. Uh, It's all about, it's all about, you know you against you in everything in good and bad it's it's you first and then people it's you first because that's the expression is going to show on your face people will see and then you're going to see the reaction it's like a mirror exactly and there's only two times in the world that you well two times in the morning the minute you get up in the morning you look at yourself and take all the boogers off your eyes and say man i hope i'm a good man today <laughs> right brush your teeth and everything yeah. and that ending of night when you go to bed you look at yourself well i think i was okay today i did people good so you know it's just the thing the beginning of the day and the end of the day you take you, you take a look at yourself twice and you see whether you were a good person to others now you can be yeah. an asshole at the ending of the day and say man you know i really did bad but tomorrow is another day and i'm going to do better today than i did yesterday Hmm. Yes, sir. That's yes, good. sir. The, the the only time that you really own is is the this time that this minute, this second that you got. The past is gone already. The future, nobody knows about it. You know, nobody knows when what's what's gonna happen or what's coming. So you earn this this second. Just make it the best and be the best man you can be. Hmm. What um, <clears throat> in your all your years? Well. It leads up to points, high points in your life. What would you leave to a student or to somebody? What kind of word of wisdom would you give them? Mm, that's amazing, you know. <sighs> you know, I need them to know something. Sharing, sharing knowledge is sharing true love with knowledge. You know, people can teach you something. It can stick in your head, you know, forever. And it's really bad. And it's going to make, a bit, you know, generation to generation really bad. So knowledge, when you teach something, no matter what it is, martial arts or not, you know, give it with love. Make it with love, with real love, and share it to the fullest. Don't don't keep something to yourself. You're gonna go one day, so give it to them. Share that love, share that knowledge. Keep that fingerprint in each one of them, you know, in their heart, so they can say until just like what I say now, you know, Sifu Ahmed Zakaria left that fingerprint in my heart, you know, and I I will never forget that. He's he this man. His smile was was something, you know. He can change, a, you know, an angry person to to another one just by smiling. So share the love with the knowledge, no matter what you give, no matter what you teach. True love, just true love. Share it with everyone, no matter what. Especially the students, especially the young ones. Maybe they will not understand it now, but they will one day. When they grow up, they'll they really remember that. So sharing knowledge with love, not with hate, and don't keep anything to yourself only. Just give it to them, and they will understand one day. Even if they're young now, it will come to them. You know, sometimes we are put into a situation that we don't want to be put in, and with all the experience that you have in the air, on the street, in the school, have you ever had to defend yourself? Are we talking about the real outside? Yes, yes, yes. In the airplane, yes, sir. I had to defend myself against myself, against fear. Uh, It's one day I had an emergency uh, while flying. It was night and I had short fuel and I tried to land and the gears didn't come out. So I had a decision between ejecting and trying to figure it out so I can land the airplane. So the pause that I had 
was really bad. You know, as long as I stay in the air, the airplane might just shut down and go down. So the, the defense that I had against myself is like, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up. There's no time. You know how to do it. You know, you know what to do. Just keep going and it's going to come. So thank God I, I've been talking to people and people helped me out. One of the, well, one of the pilots flew and he checked my airplane and we had two gears just, you know, get, came down and one didn't. So I had to land with two and thank God I got there. Uh, I landed and defended myself from myself, from that head when it just freeze. And I've seen whole, you know, my whole life in front of my eyes and I was doing nothing. And that was really bad, you know, to, from, from that night, any emergency that I have, it was just, I just keep going no matter what. That's fear, fear. I was, I was defending myself against my own fear. So thank God that was in flying. In the street, long time ago, you know, I, I really don't, don't like to do anything. My, my, my biggest defense now is like, I can say I'm sorry, no matter what. Some people don't, you know, they see you say I'm sorry, they come to you more, they want to fight you more, you know, and I've seen this a lot. But thank God here in Kuwait, uh, happens one time to me, but I had to defend myself by, by punching, kicking, doing stuff to, to a man. I hated it after that because he got really injured. So I hated it after this. I, you know, I hate to do that to someone because no matter what, he didn't know, but he, he, he wanted to fight me. He, he carried me up like this. He's a big guy. So he grabbed me. He tried to pull me up. So I had to punch him. He took me down and then I, I continued. Uh, he was so injured. So I was like, you know, that's not good. You know, you don't want to kill people. You defend yourself, but you don't want to kill them. You know, but thank God he's good. Uh, that's in the street by, by punching and kicking. Sometimes it happens by talking. And I got that from you, you know, you know, this is the tongue is, is really strong weapon. When you talk to people, you know, you can change the situation oh. uh, quickly, if you know. And I, I, I learned this from you. But in this school, yeah, a lot. I got this a lot with the, with the students sometimes, with the parents sometimes. It happens, actually. But just talking by talking and try to defend myself to teach something that really can, can make these people uh, use it for the wrong, wrong reasons. So always remember and always remind yourself to calm down, think. People look up to you, they, they, they take what you, what you give them. It's good or bad, they're gonna take it because they love you or they wanna learn from you. So be careful and don't just teach anything to show off or, or, or say something just to say you you gotta be careful because people will take it and it's gonna be really bad for you and for them mm. well there's a lot of lessons learning from you and uh, golden nuggets especially when you talk about fear and we all go through fear and you learned to control the fear and let fear become your friend um, because, you know, the only thing that to fear, the old saying is the only thing to fear is fear itself. And once you can conquer that, and then you can pretty much look almost anything in the eye, not, not in a nice way or good way, but you look at life and knowing that everything in life has, has fear, fear of getting up the next morning or fear of even going to bed because you don't know whether you're going to get up again. But, you know, yes. you put all your trust and say, okay, you know, if it's time for me to go, then God will call. But if not, then he's got a purpose for me here. And and probably the biggest lesson is yet to teach people how to overcome fear and to love. Yes, so, sir. you know, there's a lot of things can, that can be said on the topic of fear itself. And I think that one of the things that make martial arts good is that people come into the martial arts because of fear. And, and you as an instructor, the biggest thing is to change their mindset on how to overcome fear. 
They might not know how to kick and punch and do everything, but they might be really good with talking because maybe talking is the first weapon you have that can actually diffuse the situation before you go into your body language as your form of communication. There were so much things I learned from you, uh, me just by talking to you. And uh, one thing that st stuck in my head was just that you landed, you're playing on two wheels. What wheel was that? The two back wheel or one front? Or how did you land? It was a crash landing, right? Uh, it was It was actually some, it, it's like a miracle for me because it was a nose wheel and the, the left wheel. And when I landed with the hook on the back, uh, the the right the right uh, wheel, when I when I you know uh, put the airplane on the ground hard, when I landed hard, it, it opened actually, and then the airplane came down safely. But I had to shut down from there and get down. So uh, because you cannot just you know keep taxiing, this one is not really clear if it's locked or no. So that's happened. And there is something, Sifu, I, I learned from you. One day you asked me a question that, that really changed my mind and, and the way that I teach in, in my school. You said, Ahmed, what do you sell in your school? Uh, me, as you know, I was like, what do we sell? We have t-shirts and we have stuff like that. You know, you said, no, 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 no. What do you sell? So I, I couldn't get it at that time. But then I said, Sifu, uh, you, you know, you told me that you're selling hope. You're teaching people, you know, uh, stuff. They're hoping that you can change something in them. And I will never forget that because this got here and that's what's going on now. You know, we, we, people come here for, for different reasons. Uh, but everybody's hoping that this teacher or this man here uh, will change something in them or give them what they're really hoping to have. And thank you, Sifo, for that because that really taught me a lot. Absolutely. Great. Uh, maybe coming to the end of our, our time right now, I'd like to open it up to anyone up there. You know, and, and Sonny, turn it over and see if we have anybody that'd like to raise their hands and ask any kind of question. It could be anything. Sonny? Yes, Sifu, I'm on. Uh, right now, I'm just looking. Uh, there are people just saying hello. It's great to see you. And they love the passion and the skill and the patience that you guys all show. Um, uh, myself, sir, um, I've got a question, oh. actually. Yes, sir. Uh, I really appreciate being invited to that big event that you had. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, nothing but the the red carpet of red carpets, you know? Yeah. <laughs> a huge blessing and a great event. How, to me, how did you pull it off? Because, you know, to have such a big event, you know, you, you, you have to have a lot of people helping, joining, and that just goes to show that there are a lot of people who love you, trust you, and believe in you and your, uh, I guess, your purpose. So I, I, I just want to hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> well, Sonny, that's, that's, that's a good question, actually. For me, uh, as I told you guys before, this idea was in my head for eight years. I was I was going on and on and on the street and I look at this place, this big hall, and I say, you know what, one day I'll do something here. I wanna do a big event here for Kadri Kimball for martial arts. I wanna do, you know, I wanna make history here. So as I said again, having faith in God made people have faith in me to do that. So uh, it was a few people that really got close to me, uh, helped me out to do that that big event and one of them is you know my wife now and uh, she really worked really hard on that and uh, how it came it was just having faith working hard you know doing taking it step by step not just jumping there because it was really hard 
really tough. We didn't have much time, but I got the support from you guys, from Sifu and the other people. And they said, yes, we're coming. Okay, Ahmed, whatever you want. And I had that support, really helped me out. The Prince helped, helped, helped us out here, uh, Sheikh Fahad. These people, the, the, the famous people that showed up, you know, in Kuwait, these actors and, you know, many people that showed up, really make, made it really big. So what happened that we took it step by step. It was like, you know, going here and then here. One day it was like huge. I was like, wow, you know, we did all of that. You know, <laughs> what, what I was thinking now and on, on that day, you know, I was talking to my wife. I said, you know what, I'd love to do that again. But to sit down with the crowds just to watch, you know, do nothing. <laughs> I want to see what, what, what's going on and what's happening because people loved it. Uh, it was so, so amazing. It was emotional. It was something weird. It's like a dream. So the, other, the next day I was like, wow, it just went like that. Eight years I was looking at it yeah. and then boom, fast, it's done. Yeah. So... Yeah. I, I cannot describe it. It's something, you know, beyond my 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 feelings because, you know, it's all from there. Yes. He helped me out. So I couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> it just happened, you know, I, uh, and I still love it. And I hope we can do something really big in the future uh, right. when everything you, gets you way like better because I have a plan to do something really huge, but... I'm going to keep it a secret now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe and I have faith because I believe what you're able to do and I can see something to a grander scale yet. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because I know it will happen. It's not just talk. It's actually yeah. something that you, like, I actually still sort of remember a little bit of your... Uh, vision when I first met you in Hawaii for the reunion. Yes. And you yes, had you're right. been in Hawaii and you yes, wanted sir. to bring it back home. And true. There it is. It's like amazing. And I and I really do believe you're gonna do something even bigger and better because now you've already planted those seeds, those hundred percent seed in each of your black belts, each of your students, as well as your instructors. You you've got nothing but respect from other instructors as well as from your students. So I believe I truly believe that you will you will do it. It's just a matter Inshallah. of when you set that date. And I look forward to yeah. hearing when you set that date. <laughs> Inshallah, one day. And I hope everyone can be Sorry. there I again. And maybe we can have more people. Oh, Emmanuel. <laughs> we have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question, Ahmed. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, you as a pilot, uh, yeah. I used to be an aircraft mechanic and I... I used to be also a pilot, but small planes, nothing compares to you. Uh, oh. Don't you miss the flying? And do you still I... have to keep your license? You have, can you keep your license or after so many hours you lose it or whatever? Oh, I understand. Uh, I miss it, of course. I do miss it a lot. You know, it's, you know the feeling, it's, it's crazy. But uh, the license, as a fighter pilots here, we don't take, we don't get the license. But I have my hours if I want to continue flying, you know, later in, in different jets or whatever, different aircrafts. But uh, no, I'm not flying anymore. I miss it, yes. But uh, I don't know what to say, but maybe one day. I don't know, maybe one day. <laughs> my, my question is, Every now and then you have, because I, I know I used to, I had to have certain amounts of hours to don't lose yeah. it. So every now and then you have yeah. to, to keep it. Uh, no, if, I, if I'm going back again, they should give me a short course, flying again, a few hours, and then I can be, you know, it's like a refresh course, so you can get back okay. on it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Fine. Yes. It's good to see you. Looking good. Yeah, good to see you too. We'll talk later. <laughs> So yeah, we will. That was a great question there, Sipu Manuel. Uh, Thank you. Actually, I, there's another question uh, from one of your black belts who I oh. met. And he, mm -hmm. if he can unmute himself, 
Most yes, sir. There you are. <laughs> Go right ahead. Ask your question. Um, I just wanted to ask if uh, there's one piece of advice you can give yourself when you opened up your school, like one piece of advice you wish someone told you when you first opened up your school, what would be that piece of advice? That was, this question is for who, my son? <laughs> <laughs> for, I'm asking Sifu Ahmed and of course oh, anyone, and Sifu, Sifu Al, and Sonny, of course. I love My son, it's good to see you actually, my son. Mehsan is, uh, is in Egypt now. I haven't seen him for a few months. Uh, he was there. He was one of the black belts that tested in that big event. And I'm so proud to see him since he was a young, young kid here in my school uh, to reach his black belt, to see him grow and, you know, be that person on that day. It was, it was you know, it was amazing, actually. So the advice, Mehsan, for opening a school actually it should be for the good reasons when you open the school it should be for the good reasons not just open a school to to show off or to to you know challenge someone or whatever it should be for 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 from your heart to people's heart for real you know so that's 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 the thing that's going to really carry on with you and it's going to stay there but if it's just for challenge or, you know, just to show people what you got, uh, believe me, it's going to disappear soon, you know, no matter what. Because when you reach that point, you're going to stop. But if it's from here, it's going to carry on, you know. And I, I think c 4 had something to say about that. <clears throat> yeah, well, you said it, uh, Ahmed. You, it's actually coming out of your heart. And, you know, there are many reasons why a person opened up the school. And, you know, you gave your reasons, you know. So this, I'll go, I'll go with it. <laughs> I'll go with that. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. <laughs> One thing I can <laughs> recommend for you, Mosin, is that CPOL actually has a program that you can actually learn on how to run a business, especially a martial arts school business, considering that, He's had very successful schools. I mean, very nice successful schools. My school personally wouldn't have been as successful without the help of C. Wiles uh, guidance, right? Mind you, I, I agree. Did have, I did have <laughs> a school already open, but it wasn't as successful until he gave me guidance. So, if you ever wanted to just reach out, and if you're uh, sincere, truly sincere about teaching and passing on the great knowledge that you've already received and still receiving, right? You can always reach out to, to myself or Sifu Al or Sifu Ahmed, and then that can be a possibility. It's But it comes yeah. down to yeah. you. That's when it what it comes down to is, do, is it something that you really want to do from the heart? Okay, so yes, Mehsan uh, is saying that because Mehsan, you know, what Sonny's saying, you know, I've tried that with Sifu Al. He, he guided me a lot and to, to make that school successful more than before. Uh, Mehsan is saying this because I hope one day Mehsan will open his uh, Kadri Kimbo branch in Egypt and it's going to be the first there. So uh, he have my support. Inshallah, one day he's going to get there. Well, if anything, I've actually saw that when I first met him in Kuwait there, when I was uh, working with his arm there a little bit. And I knew because the way you've taught him, you can see the passion that he has, especially when he was working with some of the kids uh, that was there when we were doing the seminars and that. So you can see it's in him. Now it's just a matter of him really deciding if it's something he wants to really do, for sure. But I can see him. He can be very, very successful, especially with your guidance and Sifuel's guidance as well. Well, the sir. keynote there is passion. If you have passion, yes, that's that's it. You, you got to be able to give 110% of yourself. That's really great. Any more questions there? That is it for now, Sifu. So, you... okay, great, guys. Um, 
I just want to welcome everybody again and say goodbye to everybody. And you know, we like to open up all your your mute sound so that you know we'll just give a good old farewell and uh, a good clap and for having Sifu Ahmed, you know, join us. So let's do it on a one, two, three count. If you guys can all unmute yourself and then let's everybody give a good old clap here. All right, guys, make a lot of noise here. Fantastic. Very fantastic. All right. Thank you. All right, Thank you guys, so much. Uh, I guess that would be it. And if Sunday you have anything more to say and close or admit, then you, this is you guys' time just because we got about a minute before we leave. <laughs> See, I just want to say one thing, uh, Sunday, yeah. please. Yes, go right uh, ahead. Kaju Kimball, when it came to Kuwait and the style that the, the method that we got here, it was uh, uh, Kimpo Karate and Chuan Fa, I guess. We were under, uh, you know, Joe Halbuna. You know, we were doing Joe Halbona's stuff, same Grandmaster Joe Halbona. So maybe most of the people don't know that Joe Halbona was, you know, the senior there. Uh, the, the thing that Bob Mashmara brought here to Kuwait was William Beaver. So uh, Joe Halbona was uh, the senior and most people didn't know about him. But yeah, we came from there, but I'm so proud and happy to be with Sifu Al Dacascos and Sifu Al Dela Cruz to guide me and help me out, our seniors. And thank you so much, Sifu, for, for what you're doing, uh, you know, for helping us, uh, helping us out nonstop. You, I don't remember a day that I asked you to, you know, for anything and uh, or any question to help me out in anything in martial art. And you said, you know, you, you don't have time or something. You always make time. Thank you so much. And that really gives us, you know, uh, gives us, you know, teach us how to, to deal with this stuff with the students and with everyone and hope everyone learns from that. Thank you so much, Sifu, and aloha. All right, guys. Welcome right. and goodbye. So, All right, guys. Thank All you. All right, guys. Take thank care you. of yourself. Aloha. Yeah, guys, if you are watching the YouTube um, replay on this, what I want you to do is if you've learned something from it or if you've got some knowledge from it or if you just, if it just even made you smile, put a like on it, put a thumbs up. And then also what I want you guys to do is wherever you are, write in the comments where you're watching from, okay? I, I, I'd be really interested on where everybody is from. So when you watch a YouTube channel, make sure comment below from what country you're at and watching it. And then also don't forget, subscribe button, press that bell and say, get my notification for the next uh, YouTube download. All right, thank you very much guys. You guys have an awesome day, afternoon, evening. Good night, good night. Aloha, aloha, aloha. Bye-bye. Aloha, thank you so much, thank you so much. Aloha. <laughs>